Hey guys, Nate Vincent here with FC Puro, and I'm going to show you how to align your car at home for less than $50. So alignments are pretty key when it comes to driving your car. You need to have the tires pointed in the right direction. If they're not pointed in the right direction, you're gonna see bad tire wear, bad handling, possibly crooked steering wheel. All of those things are things that are gonna happen when your car is not aligned. We have a race team here at FCP Hero and we've learned a lot about alignments. We go to racetracks all around the country and do up to 15 to 20 alignments in a weekend. The way we do that is we use string alignments. String alignments are extremely accurate and they get the car pointed in the right direction. So right here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take about $50 worth of items purchased at a hardware store and we're gonna go through every little detail you need to know to get your European car aligned properly and going down the road straight. So why might you need alignment? If you're looking at a race car, you're gonna need alignment to try to get the most out of the car. Whether that is just trying to get a tenth of a lap or get those tires pointed in the right direction, that's the reason you're gonna need alignment there. But on a street car, there's many different reasons why you might need alignment. Maybe you replaced your struts or you replaced your ball joint or tie rod, something like that. Anytime you replace any critical suspension component, your alignment is gonna go out and this is the way to get it back. Also, normal street driving might, might cause a bad alignment. If you hit a curb or you know, maybe a pothole in the road, something like that, it's going to bend the wheel out of alignment and this is a way to get your car trued up and driving down the road straight. So before we get started, the first thing we're gonna do is talk about the two parameters that we're gonna focus on adjusting. Those are gonna to be toe, which is the angle in which the wheels are in relationship to one another. So if they're towed in or towed out like this. And the other thing is going to be camber, which is the angle of the wheel like this. So the top of the wheel leaning in towards the car. Those are the main two parameters that you're gonna focus on on most European cars. If you wanna know more about these parameters and how they affect the car, check out our Race Cars Explain video on our YouTube channel. So the first thing you're seeing here, and you're probably wondering why I have two pieces of PVC pipe in front of me. It's a pretty odd part to be working on a car. The reason we have this PVC pipe is this allows us to create two parallel bars. Parallel bars that are gonna sit in front and behind the car. These parallel bars are gonna allow this fishing line right here to go front to back in the car and create a perfect square box around that car. That square box that we're gonna create around the car is what every single toe measurement is going to be based off of. Now, we wanna make sure our wheels are pointed in the right direction while we're doing all these measurements. So we have a couple of straps right here. These straps are gonna loop around the steering wheel and they're gonna hold the steering wheel perfectly straight while we work on the car. One of the things that often happens if you start loosening up tie rods and moving things around, the steering wheel will shift and you don't even know it happens. So it is really key to make sure that the steering wheel is locked down. Now, the other thing you're gonna need is a couple jack stands, which I'm sure you all have at home. This is going to basically hold the parallel bars up and we're gonna need a couple metal scales or rulers like this, which is just going to basically get the measurements off the front and the back of the wheel. I highly suggest that you have two of these as it will make it much easier to do. Now, the last thing we're gonna need here is for our camber. So to find our camber angles, we have a basic angle finder. Uh, this was purchased for about $30 at a local hardware store. You can find them online or at a local hardware store. And this is the key element in getting the camber angle or the lean of the wheel and making sure we have the correct measurement. The one thing you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure you have the correct specs for your car. These are usually pretty easy to obtain and they're pretty relevant information. The specs are going to include the camber angles for both front and rear axle and the toe angles for both the front and rear axle. Negative toe is going to mean that the wheels are towed in. Basically the fronts of the wheels are pointed in towards each other and positive, a plus number toe is going to mean the front of the wheels are pointed away from each other. Um, that is a key thing to know. The other thing you're gonna to want to note here is that oftentimes factory specs come in degrees and we're not going to actually be measuring these things in degrees. So there's a really nice little conversion chart here that shows you how to convert degrees to an actual measurement depending on the wheel diameter you have. The reason the factory does it in degrees is because they often make cars with different size wheel diameters and it's very difficult to get an actual physical measurement. So degrees kind of accomplishes all of that. So by converting from degrees and knowing what size wheels you have, you can get a simple measurement that can be measured in millimeters or fractions of an inch. So without further ado, let's get started. Let me show you all the tips and tricks we've de developed over the years to get your car aligned and pointed in the right direction. All right, so before we begin, the first thing we wanna talk about is the basic orientation of the car. As you can see, we have the car positioned on the lift here, and we also have these scale pads underneath it to lift it up a little bit. Lifting the car makes it a little bit easier to do the alignment as, as if we have to crawl under this car to adjust the toe or the camber, or anything of that nature. That said, it doesn't necessarily have to be done that way. Also, the other reason why we have it on the lift is so we can lift it up and show you a more clear camera angle of actually adjusting the toe, um, loosening up the tie rods, that sort of thing. So 
Um, don't need to have it on a lift and you don't need to have pads under it. The pads are extremely helpful um, and the lift just makes it a little bit easier for the camera to see. So the first thing we're gonna do to get the basically box set up around the car is we're going to measure the track width. What I say box around the car is we're going to use the two PVC pipes over there to create two parallel bars that sit in front and behind the car. Those parallel bars are gonna have a measurement on them that is exactly the same distance apart. When we have that exact same distance apart on the front and rear bar, we will run a string down the side, both sides of the car, and that will create a parallel box around the car. That will allow us to take measurements off the wheel and see exactly where the toe measurements are. We will record those measurements and then we'll see if we need to make any adjustments. So first things first, with a tape measure, I'm just gonna go from the outside of the left front wheel over to the outside of the right front wheel. This is a rough measurement, doesn't need to be perfectly exact. And I'm gonna see that this is about a 70 inch track width. So taking that 70 inches, we're going to add about five inches per side to make sure the bars stick out a little bit to the sides of the car to give us room to run the strings up and down. So I'm gonna take 70, add five per side, that's about 80 inches. So we're gonna first cut our PVC pipes to about 80 inches long. So right here we have some Schedule 40 uh, 3 quarter inch drain pipe. This is basically picked up at Lowe's or Home Depot, anything like that. Um, this costs about $4 a length. So these are 10 foot lengths. So we have about $8 worth of pipe here and I'll show you what we're gonna do this. So the first thing we're gonna do is like I said, we're going to take the 70 inch track width. We're gonna add five inches per side. So about 80, maybe give us a little bit of a buffer. So we're gonna cut this around 84 inches. So right here, we have seven feet or 84 inches. Uh, take my little Sharpie and I'm just gonna do a mark here. This measurement does not need to be perfectly exact because we're actually not gonna hang anything off the ends of these pipes. We're just trying to get them in the right, the right neighborhood. Um, I'm gonna mark the other pipe as well and then we'll cut them. Um, and to cut these pipes, uh, this is PVC. You can use a hacksaw, you can use a wood saw, honestly. Um, we're gonna use a little reciprocating saw, um, but yeah, anything will really cut this stuff. This is a Probably you can cut it with a razor blade if you wanted to. All right, so using my reciprocating saw, I'm just gonna do a quick cut through this. So right here I've drawn a quick diagram of the front of the car. These are the tires, and we know that the track width on this Mini is about 70 inches across. Now, we know that we cut the parallel bar, the PVC pipe, to 84 inches. What we're trying to do is we're going to put a little notch in this pipe that are exactly the same front to back, and they need to be approximately three inches away from the wheel. So doing some quick math here, we have 70 plus three, that's gonna be 73, plus three on the other side, that's gonna be 76. So now we know our strings are gonna be 76 inches apart. Now we need to take our 84 that we have here, subtract 76, that's gonna give us eight inches. We're gonna split that eight inches in half. And so we know that we're gonna measure in about four inches right here from the sides to make our notches for our strings to run down the side of the car. So let's go over and do that. So now we know we need to go in four inches from the edge. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna quickly align these two perfectly and I'm gonna measure in four inches and I'm gonna mark it on both of them right there. So the first one is not that critical, um, but by the time we do the second one, we need to make sure that these two notches and those two notches are exactly aligned on these two bars. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut through and I'm only gonna cut in a little bit. I'm just gonna put a notch in this. We're not gonna cut all the way through. So you can see there. I just cut through a little notch about a third of the way through the pipe, leaving the rest of the pipe there. I'm gonna do it on the other side. So now we have two notches. So now to make sure that we are perfectly aligned on both of them, I'm gonna go get one of the metal rulers or scales that we have, and I'm going to slide it in the notch that was just cut so we can cut the notches on the other side exactly the same. So now using this metal scale, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna slide it into these notches, which is going to align these two notches perfectly in the same, in the same orientation. So then I can go to the other end and cut the notches right across both of them simultaneously. So actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip this over just like that and let this sit on the floor holding it perfectly aligned. Now moving down here, I'm gonna measure in four inches again, and I'm gonna put a mark just on one of them. The key here, like I said before, 
is that the notches need to be perfectly aligned between the rear bar and the front parallel bar. So now using a tool, I'm going to pull this up a little bit, making sure those two stay aligned, pinch them together, and I'm actually going to cut the notch at the same time across both of them. Make sure everything is aligned there. Come over here, and you can see that the two notches are perfectly aligned on both of these. Um, if you're concerned, you can always run a tape measure and just verify. So I'm going to run the tape measure to the bar there. Come here, and I can see that we are exactly 76 and a 16th. And now I'm going to go to the front bar and do the same thing. And we are 76 and a 16th. All right, so the next thing we're going to do now that we have our parallel bars cut and notched properly, we're going to use the jack stands to lift the bars up to the center line of the wheels. As you can see here, I'm going to take the front bar, I'm just going to run it right across. And now that I'm running it right across, we can actually lift this up to approximately the center line of the wheel. So you can see here, I'm just kind of approximating this. Uh, we'll get more accurate with the string. One, two, three, four, five notches there. We'll do the same on this side. One, two, three, four, five. Right there. And do the same in the rear. Again, you're looking for the center line of the wheel. So if you can see here, to the center line of the wheel. So what we're doing here is we're going to take the steering wheel and we're going to take these ratchet straps and we're actually going to loop them around the steering wheel and tie them down to the seat or the seat bracket, something of that nature. And we're going to make sure the steering wheel stays in the 12 o'clock position. That means when we go to take the measurements and make any adjustments on the suspension, the steering wheel is always going to be straight and we remove that variable from the equation. All right, so now that I have the strap around one side of the steering wheel, I'm going to loop it around the bottom of the seat here. And I'm just going to give it a couple ratchets, put some tension in it, and then we're going to clamp the other side. You can see it's pulling a little bit to the right. I'm going to clamp the left side and make sure it's straight. Okay, again, up and around and back through. And now I'm just going to come down to the bottom of the seat here. Make sure we stay clipped. And now I'm just going to verify that the steering wheel is straight. So maybe one more click on the left side. Now everything looks nice and straight. We're gonna go take the measurements on the suspension. All right, so now that we have the two parallel bars set up, we're gonna take our fishing line. You can see I've actually tied a weight to the one side of this fishing line. It makes it a little easier. You can also use electrical tape to tape it to the bars. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through the notch here and then we're gonna run this all the way up to the front. And we can take this and lock it and we can just let that dangle right over the front, just like that. And you can see that the two weights on both sides create a tension across this line, and this line will now be running parallel up through the side of the car. That said, we do need to adjust it. This is a great time to have a friend help you out, and we'll show you how to do that. All right, so right now what we're going to do is we're going to set the strings and the parallel bar so it's even on the front axle, side to side. So how we're going to do that is it, you can do this yourself by running back and forth, but it's a lot easier if you have two people. Basically, we take one of the scales and we go to the center of the wheel. So we pick a spot on the center of the wheel, we measure from that spot, and we will read the numbers back and forth to each other until we get the exact same number. When we know we have the exact same number on the center of the wheel, we know that this bar is aligned on the center line of the car, side to side. So Ben, what do you read? 135. Okay, so I'm reading about 94. So the bar needs to come significantly towards the passenger side of the car. So I'm gonna split that difference and bring it up to about 115. What do you read, Ben? I'm at 112. 112, so if, I'm at one, if he's at 112, I'm at 115. That means we're gonna split this around 113 and a half. So I'm gonna go in. All right, Ben, where are you at? I'm like right at 114. 114, so I'm going to just wiggle just a teeny bit out. What are you at? 113 and a half. I'm at 113 and a half. All right, so now that we are both reading the same measurement from the center of the wheel to the string, that means that this front bar and the front section of the box right here is aligned to the center of the car. So now we're going to go to the back of the car, we're going to do the exact same thing, and that's going to allow us to start measuring our toe off the outside of the wheel. All right, so you can see we're on the center line of the wheel, so we're good here. 
Now, measuring out from the center here, um, if you have a center point that you can go to, it is actually better. But on these wheels, the center is so deep that we're going as close to that chamfer as possible. Uh, ben, what do you see? I see 110. So Ben's at 110. You can see we're at 100 on the dot. So we're going to move this to about 105, and it should be even on both sides. So moving to 105. What do you have, Ben? 105. 105, I have 105. All right, let's go verify the front and we should be good to go. So what we've done here is we've taken the parallel bar in the front, the parallel bar in the rear, we've run strings down the side of the car and then using an assistant, I basically aligned them so that box is perfectly square around the car. That means that this string right here and this string right here is perfectly parallel, even though the track widths in the front and the rear of the car may vary. That's going to allow us to get the toe perfectly straight in this car and get the measurement that we need. All right, so now using this piece of paper and this little diagram that I've drawn out, we are going to get the toe measurements for the car. So you can see when we set the parallel bars, uh, we both measured 113 to the center on the front wheels and 105 to the center on the rear wheels. So we know that the parallel bars are parallel to the car. Now what we're going to do is we're going to measure the front of the wheel versus the rear of the wheel all the way around and we're going to record those measurements. Once we record those measurements, we can do some quick math, subtracting one from the other, and we can figure out what the toe out or toe in is on the car. All right, so now taking the scale, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the very front tip of the wheel, right on the center line, making sure that I'm not touching the string, and I'm going to record what the measurement is. Um, I'm seeing 92 millimeters right on the front, and then I'm going to go to the rear. I'm going to do the exact same measurement, and I am seeing 95 millimeters on the rear. All right, so the measurement we got on the rear was 95. The measurement we got in the front was 92. So now we're looking at this, we have a parallel measurement that we measured from right here, that our string, and we know that this one is longer than this one. That means that the wheel is actually towed out. So you imagine this distance right here to the parallel is longer, so the back of the wheel is pushed in, the front of the wheel is pushed out. So that means that the right front wheel on this mini behind me has three millimeters, so 95 minus 92 of toe out. So what we'll do is we can write this over here. We can just say plus three millimeters. Now we're gonna go around the entire car and we're gonna do the exact same thing and we're gonna figure out exactly where all the wheels are pointing. Few moments later. So right here we have the entire measurements for the toe of this mini behind me. You can see right here, the first one we did, we had plus three. That means that the front right wheel was towed out or outside of the car. So uh, the front was further out. Um, and that was out by three millimeters. But then we go over to the left side of the car and it was actually in by five millimeters. So that means both wheels were a little bit off to one side, which is going to mean the steering wheel is gonna be a little bit crooked. Um, you can see what I've done now is I've actually summed these up. So I've taken the plus three, added it to the negative five, and we get a total between the, the axle of negative two millimeters toe in. So that is a relatively close number of what we want to be, but you can see that it's off a little bit. So in order to straighten the steering wheel out, we're going to adjust this side and we're going to adjust this side, and that will hopefully give the car a much straighter steering wheel when it's traveling straight. Now, moving to the rear of the car, you can see that we had a 83 up in the front of the wheel, 84 in the back, same on the left side, 83, 84. So that means we have um, one millimeter toe out on the left rear, one millimeter of toe out on the right rear, which is a total of two millimeters toe out on the rear of this car. Um, we don't suggest toe out for any cars other than track cars. Um, it is an aggressive setting that makes the car want to turn more. Um, obviously we suggest using the standard um, alignment settings that the manufacturer provides. But in this case, we're actually going to keep this to toe out um, to help the front wheel drive car in this case, rotate around the corners and turn a little better. Now that we have all the measurements from the car, we know exactly what direction the wheels are facing, we are going to look at the factory spec that we acquired from BMW. So this factory spec for the R56 Mini says that we have 12 minutes of towing in the front and 24 minutes of towing in the rear. So how do we convert something like minutes to millimeters that we can measure? Let me show you how. So looking at the 12 minutes of towing on the front of the Mini, we move over to this conversion chart, which will be included in this video. You can see there's two key factors that we need to note when using this conversion chart. The first thing is that we have a 17 inch wheel on the car. So we're only going to be looking at this column that is focusing on 17 inch wheels on the car. So this column right here is the number of minutes. So you can see in the front we have 12, so we're gonna to go to the closest number to 12, which is actually 11, and we're gonna move over to this column right here, which is a conversion to millimeters, and you can see that is a total toe-in of 1.5 millimeters. So now I'm gonna take my pen and I'm gonna mark that on this chart, 
1.5 total. Now, going to the rear, we have a little bit more towing in the rear. We're actually at 24 minutes towing. So we don't have a number for, for 24, but we have 22 and 26. So we can split the difference between the two. We're going to come over here, and that is 3 millimeters or 3.5 millimeters towing. So using that, I can make the assumption that this will be about 3.2 millimeters of towing on the rear. All right, so now that we've converted the factory spec in minutes to millimeters, something we can measure more easily, we're going to compare that to the measurement that we took on the car when we actually did the first set down alignment. Looking at that, we can see the rear is actually supposed to be plus three millimeter toe in. So that means that the total toe between the right rear and the left rear is supposed to be towed in three millimeters. That would equal 1.5 on one side and 1.5 millimeters on the other side. We're gonna split the difference right down the middle. Now looking at the front, we can see that the total toe in from the factory spec is supposed to be 1.5 millimeters. That means that we're gonna see 0.75 toe in on the right front and 0.75 toe in on the rear, on the left front. What we saw when we did the measurement was that the total toe in was actually relatively accurate. It was actually two millimeters toe in. But the big difference was the right front was towed out almost four millimeters and the left front was towed in nearly six millimeters. So that means that the car would be in a crab. So basically while the total degrees or the total measurement between the two wheels would be equal, the car would be offset to one side. That would either mean that your steering wheel would be crooked as you're driving or the, in, the rear, in the case of the rear, the car would crab down the road slightly crooked. So now using the parallel lines, we're not only gonna make sure that the total toe is straight, but we're also gonna make sure that the side to side toe is straight so the car is not crabbing and the steering wheel is straight. So since we're making no changes to the rear because we found it was in the spec, what we're going to do is we're gonna lift the car up in the air and we're gonna make an adjustment just to the front tie rods. Like I said, the right front wheel is towed out while the left front wheel is towed in. So what we're gonna to have to do is we're going to have to move the right front wheel in, tow it in, and the left front wheel is gonna to have to significantly tow out. The value between the two of them should be within spec and we need to make sure that they're split evenly side to side. All right, so here we are on the right, right front of this R56 Mini and the measurement we took on this wheel was three millimeters toe out or a negative three millimeter. So basically the front of this wheel is pushed out three millimeter more than the back side of this wheel. So what we're gonna do is we're going to go for a total tow out in the front of this car of two millimeters tow out. That means we want the right front wheel to be one millimeter tow out and we want the left front wheel to be one millimeter towed out. So that means we need to move this wheel in two millimeters. So what we're going to do, that means that this is going to move out one millimeter, that is going to move in one millimeter, making the total change two millimeters. So knowing that this is the pivot point and this is the measure point, we wanna move this out one millimeter. In order to move this out one millimeter, we're going to extend the tie rod right here by about two thirds of that one millimeter. So that's gonna be about 0.7 of a millimeter we're going to extend this tie rod. All right, so now we're gonna come up here and we're going to loosen up the lock um, on the tie rod. So some will have gland nuts, some will have pinch like this. So we can just... So this is what locks the tie rod in place. And we're just gonna loosen that up a little bit just to allow adjustment to happen. All right, so now we're gonna take our scale and we're gonna measure the tie rod. You can see I put some red electrical tape around this so I have a nice line to measure to, to here. So we're gonna look at this and you can see that we're seeing approximately, um, looks like, 27 and a half millimeters between the two, maybe 20, 27 millimeters flat. The other thing you can do here is we can look at this thread. So I know this is a 1.5 millimeter pitch thread. Um, what I can do is knowing that it's a 1.5 millimeter, that means every rotation it moves out 1.5 millimeters. Knowing we wanna move this about three quarters of a millimeter, I can say I'm going to do half a rotation on the tie rod to straighten this wheel out and bring the toe back in. The next thing we're going to do here is we're going to take this, and on this car it's a 13 millimeter. Um, it may be a different size on different cars. Um, and I'm gonna take my 13 millimeter and I'm going to basically adjust this in. You can see that sometimes these are backwards threads, so basically turning it this way is going to pull this shorter. I want to actually extend this, so I'm gonna turn it this way to extend it, and that's gonna push the back of the wheel out and remove some toe from the car. So, making a mark. You can see there's a mark right there I put on. I can then go rotate this, so. All right, so now we're looking to change the total toe on this side by about four millimeters. So this side was towed in quite a bit and we're gonna actually move the wheel out. Um, toe in meaning this side is closer in and what we need to do is move this out. So that means we need to shorten up the tie rod to move the wheel out. Now looking at this, we're looking for a total movement of about four millimeters and that's between here and here. So that's the sum, so that's this 
and this. Um, so basically, if we split that sum in half, we're looking to move this one out two millimeters and this one in two millimeters. Um, so looking at that, we can see this is our center pivot. This is the measure point that we want to move two millimeters because remember the total is the sum of both, so it's doubled. So two millimeters, and this is the measure point. You can see this is about 60% or 70% of the way over. So that means I'm going to take my two millimeters and I'm going to move that about 60 or 70%, so about 1.5 millimeters. You can see we've made some marks on here um, and used some red electrical tape to make the make it really clear how much we're changing that. So the first thing we're going to do is take a measurement on this and then we're going to loosen it up and we're going to make the movement. So as I can see, to the edge of the tape, we're about 30 millimeters. So we're going to try to decrease that to about 28 and a half or 1.5 millimeters. So we know we want to move this tie rod out about 1.5 millimeters. We also know that the thread pitch on this is a 1.5 millimeter thread pitch. So we should be good with actually loosening this up one full turn. Um, again, this whole process is going to be a little bit trial and error. You want to definitely do measurements or turns that you can count. So whether it's a half turn, a quarter turn, a full turn. So you can then go and when you set it back down and measure on the strings, you can say, okay, I need to go another quarter turn or another half turn. Um, you don't want to just do random measurements that you don't, you can't validate and compare to the actual measurements. And now taking an adjustment wrench, we're gonna go on the flats on the inside here. And like I said, we're going to shorten this distance up because we want to tow the wheel out. So I'm gonna thread this into the tie rod. There we go. We did full and one full rotation. The, the little mark is on the bottom. All right, let's see what we got. Let's set let's this thing down and run the strings and we'll see what we got. So now with the car back on the ground, we're going to settle the suspension by basically rolling it back and forth a little bit just to make sure it's seated all the way into the ground um, and that the suspension has fully drooped and relaxed. And the other thing we're going to do is now we're gonna set up the strings and we're gonna take our baseline measurements, make sure we have a nice parallel box again, and then we'll measure again. So now that we set the car back down on the ground and we made sure that our strings are parallel by measuring the, to the center of both front wheels and both rear wheels and making sure that the bars were aligned. Now that that measurement's set, we're going to look at the front wheels. We're gonna take a front measurement and a rear measurement and we're gonna see how the tie rod adjustment affected the toe in the front. All right, so now that we've made the adjustment and we've remeasured, we realize that we are within spec now and the change we made over to the corner of the car has straightened out the front toe. Uh, we were going for a total of basically two mil millimeters toe out in the front. We ended up at around 2.3 or 2.4 millimeters toe out. That's within the spec that we were targeting. So we're going to basically tighten up the tie rods and we're gonna move forward. So now that we're done doing our toe adjustment, we're actually going to do our camber adjustment. And the first step to doing a camber adjustment is making sure the ground you are working on is level. So as you can see right here, I have a level across the ground and I have the angle finder on it and both are reading zero. So we know that the level in this garage is flat. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna lower the car down and we're gonna start taking camber measurements at each wheel. Let me show you how to do that. To get an accurate camber measurement, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a straight edge like this and run it across the wheels. The key is you really wanna make sure this doesn't touch anything aside from the tire or the wheel. The tire works, the wheel is better. So if you had something that was about 17 or 18 inches long that could go from this edge of the rim to that edge of the rim and that we knew was straight, that would be the very best case scenario. In this case, we don't have something that's that short. So we're using this level right here, which is going from the tire here to the tire here. So that will give me a good accurate measurement. It may be 0.1 or 0.2 degrees off, worst case scenario, but we're still gonna get a really good measurement. So what we're going to do is we're going to run this across here just like this and we're going to put even pressure right in the middle of the wheel so it's basically pushed nice and evenly against the wheel and we're going to take our angle finder and we're going to put our angle finder right against it. So now I can actually take my hand off and I can just look directly at the angle finder and I'm seeing um, we're at exactly 2.8 degrees negative camber. So that's meaning that the wheel is leaned over towards the car so the top of the wheel is towards the car 2.8 degrees. Now we're going to go around the car and we're going to take the same measurements and we're going to record them all. 
All right, so we've gone around the entire car and we've measured what the camber angles are. So in this case, we had 2.8 degrees on both fronts and we had 0.8 degrees on the left rear and one degree on the right rear. So we're within 0.2 degrees on all four corners. So now I'm gonna show you if we were to make a camber change, which we are not, how we would do that on the front. Looking at this, this is a camber plate, but there's basically two basic ways to adjust camber on the front of a McPherson struck car. One way is to extend the control arm, whether that's through an eccentric bolt or some sort of fancy extension mechanism, and that is to basically push the bottom of the strut out. The other way is with a camber plate or some stock mechanism that allows the front top mount to move inward towards the engine. In this case, we have a camber plate. Sometimes you just have um, you know, eccentric bolts or you may have a slotted hole that allows for some adjustment from the factory. Typically on street cars coming from the factory, you're gonna see about maybe half to one degree of adjustability in the front camber. Um, same with the rear. And obviously with aftermarket parts such as these camera plates or the control arms in the rear, you're going to see an increased amount of adjustability up to about five degrees of total adjustability. As you can see, if we were to make a, a change on the front of this car, we would loosen up these bolts, we would move this, we'd lock it back down, and then we'd do the exact same thing where we got our baseline setting by putting the straight edge across the wheel, putting the angle finder on it, and recording the result. All right, so here we are in the back of the car, and we made some adjustments to the front. Luckily, we found the back was actually within spec, so we didn't make any adjustments. That said, there's a couple notes I want to talk about on the, adjusting the rear suspension on a car to make sure you can get it right the first time. One of those things is right here, the camber adjustment. So on this car, this has an after aftermarket camber adjuster. This needs to be done before you adjust tow. So the tow and the camber on the rear on the rear of this car, a rear trailing arm suspension like this, are slightly overlapped. So if you adjust some camber, you will get some tow adjustment, and if you adjust tow, you'll get some camber adjustment. So I highly recommend adjusting camber first and then moving to tow. The second thing we want to talk about is how do you actually adjust the tow on the rear of a car like this. So you can see this has a rear trailing arm. So this aluminum piece right here is the rear trailing arm, and this actually has four bolts right here that actually mount the wheel bearing directly to this piece. That means as this piece shifts, the tow and the camber of the wheel will actually shift along with it. So if we we're going to make it a, a tow adjustment to this wheel, what we're going to do is we're going to take this front mount, which is belted up into the chassis right here, we loosen the bolts, and if you move that mount towards the inside of the car, we're going to create more tow in. If we move that mount towards the outside of the car, we're gonna create more tow out. So pretty simple stuff, but just a kind of understanding of how these things work together and how to make those adjustments. I hope you found this video helpful. We showed you how to align your car at home in your home garage with basically $50 worth of items purchased from a hardware store. Now, if you're concerned about accuracy, let me tell you that string alignments are probably the most accurate type of alignment out there. If you look at any sort of racing, you see GT cars that are upwards of a million dollars, all the way to Formula One cars being aligned using string alignments. It is extremely accurate. It just requires a little bit more thought from the person doing the actual work. Now, when you go to a shop, they're using the same exact process, trial and error, to make sure your car is aligned, except they have lasers and lights guiding them and helping them make it a little bit more user friendly. While the alignment we performed on this car is relatively generic to most front wheel drive European cars, there is slight variations. One thing I will say is I recommend doing some research and finding out exactly how to make the adjustments on your car before you begin. That said, the alignment strings, the parallel bars, and the way we checked the camber is going to be the same on all cars no matter what. If you found this video helpful, please give us a thumbs up. If you want to see more like this, please subscribe to our channel. And of course, if you have any questions or if there's anything we didn't cover, please leave a comment in the comments below. We'll catch you on the next one. Okay, finally.